So lots of people have been asking me how to make a dialogue tree, or how to make dialogue in a game. So I'm going to show you. First of all, I'm going to go to my events. So all I've got here is just my external events for my player. Quite simple. So I'm just going to make a new event, and this is going to be at the beginning of the scene. And I'm going to add an action, and I'm going to go down to my dialogue tree, and I'm going to load dialogue tree from a JSON file. I'm going to create one using yarn. So I can then rename this. So in yarn you have nodes. This is a node and it contains text if you double click on it. This is just plain text. So I can change it to something like, hello there. You can make a new node by pressing this if you want to. You can delete them by clicking on this. You can also change their color with these arrows, which is quite nice. So for now, I'm just going to click apply. And so this has now loaded this JSON file. So now I'm going to make a new event. And I'm going to trigger the loading of the file. So I'm going to just see if the player is in collision with an object. And that object is going to be a person. So I'm just going to quickly make a person here. It will just be a white square. Here we go, a really simple square. So this will be my secondary one. And now the action will be to start the dialogue. So we'll go down here and then start dialogue from branch. The branch will be start. And so in this file, you'll see that the start node, this is a branch. So it can branch down into different nodes from choices. So I'm making yarn start with this branch start. But if we play it, nothing happens. This is because we haven't said how to display it to the player. And so we need to make a text object for that. So let's make a new object, make it text. And I'm just going to call this dialogue. I'm going to make the size 10 and the color white. Here we go. So now in my events, I'm going to make a new event. I'm going to make a condition, go down to my dialogue tree, and I'm going to use dialogue line type. And so there are three types here. Text is just plain text like we have already. Options I'll get to later. And commands I won't do in this video, but I'll link somewhere where you can read about it. So I'm just going to choose text for now. And we're going to add an action. And we're just going to change the text object. And we're going to modify the text. The text will be dialogue. We're going to set it to dialogue tree, colon, colon. And then this will bring up all of the stuff that the dialogue tree has, one of which being clipped line text. And this is basically scrolling text. And so we're going to make scrolling text. So now I'm going to make a sub event of this, and we're going to use a timer. This timer is going to be used to say how long of a gap there is between each letter coming up on the screen. And so the value that the time is going to have is going to be a global variable. So I'm just going to make a global variable. So I've made one already here called text scroll speed and its value is 0.5. This doesn't matter too much, but you can set it to whatever you want. So now I'm going to add a condition timers and time value of a scene timer. And this time will be a global variable. And the global variable is going to be text scroll speed and the time is name we can just set as text scroll, for example. And so now we're going to add an action. I'm going to go down to the dialogue tree and I'm going to scroll the clipped text. And then I'm going to reset this timer. Go to timers and time, start or reset a seam timer. And the timer is text scroll. So I also want some way for the player to input to go on to the next line. And so to do that, I'm going to make a new event, still a sub of this. The condition is just going to be keyboard, and I'm going to do key released. And that's going to be the X key. Could be Z, could be spacebar, could be anything. So when the X key is released, and when the clipped text has completed scrolling, the action is going to be go to the next dialogue line. And so now I'm going to make a new event. This will just be X key is pressed. So let me just copy and paste this. Let's change it to pressed. I'm going to change this global variable 
So this is going to change the speed of how fast each letter comes up. So I'm going to change the global variable of text scroll speed. I'm going to set it to 0 0.02. And so now when you hold down the X key, it will make the scrolling go faster. So I'm going to copy and paste this, but when the X key is not pressed, I'm going to make it go slower. So now when you run it, if I walk into him, nothing happens. So I'm actually going to make the, the dialogue tree start when the player also presses X. So now I'm going to make a new event and I'm going to put this event as a sub as well as this. So when the dialogue tree comes up, we are able to move, but we don't want to do that. And so this will make us not be able to move. So the condition is going to go down to dialogue tree again and the dialogue is running. We're going to invert this and I'm also going to hide the dialogue text object, but then I'm going to show it again when we press X. So now when we play, we press X. There you go, comes up and we can't move when it comes up. So now we can add new lines to it like so. And I'm also going to add options. So here is choice slash link. So we can click this and then we can add options. So the first part of this is what shows up to the user. And the second part is what node it then goes to. And so we can just do dialogue. Yes. And so now when we come out of this, it will create a node that it's pointing to, which is dialogue. Yes. And so when the player selects this, it will then go to this node and start doing what's in here. So we can do awesome. For example, we can also do a no option. So if I copy and paste this, change this to no, and also change this to no, then it will make another node. We can change this to how sad. So now if we play it, hello there. Wow. This is cool, but it doesn't show the options. And so how do we do that? Well, we first need to make a new text object to be able to show the options. So let's do that text. And I'm just going to call this dialogue options, which make it 10 and make the color white. And so I'm just going to place this where I want the options to come up, which will be about here. So now we go to our events and we can make a new event. For the condition, I'm going to go down to dialogue tree and choose the dialogue line type. And this time we want to choose options, but I'm going to invert it. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we can hide the dialogue choices because we don't want this to be displayed all the time. We only want it to show when there's options popping up. And so when the dialogue line is at an options point, so yes or no, it will show this. And so let's do that. So I can simply just copy and paste this, uninvert this, and then show this. But this will only show the choices. We still need to make it select them. So we're going to make a sub event of this, and we're going to use the up and down keys for this. So let's do key pressed and then up. And so there are multiple ways of doing this part. I personally like doing selecting the options at the index, but you can do select next option or select previous option. But I like doing it select option by number. And this also starts from zero. So the first option would be zero. The second one would be one, etc. So this will be zero. And now we can just copy and paste this for the down key, but change this to one. And so now we can select them, but we can't confirm our selection. And so I'm going to do that with the X key. So I'm going to make a new event of it. Keyboard key pressed X and the action is going to be dialogue tree and then confirm selected option. And so once this is run, it will go on to the next node that the dialogue tree has shown. And so up here, once we've selected this one, it will then move to this node. Or if we do this one, it will move to this node. So now we can select them, but we can't see which one we've chosen. And so to do that, we can just make a new event, add a condition. This will be dialogue tree. And we want to choose has selected option changed. And so if it has, then we want to give the user some visual feedback. And that can be in the form of an arrow pointing right to the option that they've selected. So we can then change the text of dialogue options. I'm going to set it to dialogue tree, colon, colon, and then vertical 
options list. And then whatever's inside of this will be what shows up next to your options. So I'm just going to do this. And so, yeah. And so we're pretty much done. If I run it, you'll see that we can go into this. We can press X. It will show the text. Then it will show the options. We can go up and down. If we do yes, awesome. And then we can move again. If we do no, then it will do the other one. And that's really how easy it is. I will link a page in the description of more in-depth dialogue tree stuff, but this is just the simple basics. I hope this helped you, and have fun. Mm -hmm.